Hello, welcome back to Craft and the Cryptic, where I thought we'd um, take a look at one of these historic Nickley.com uh, puzzles again before they, they disappear forever, and use it to illustrate something that uh, many of you I think will be self-evidently obvious, but for some of you, uh, you know, it may just give you pause for thought and remind you of the principles that, um, you know, are useful to be refreshed from time to time. Now, the interesting thing about the puzzle on screen is that it's one of the rare puzzles, one of the rare Sudoku puzzles on Nikki.com that uh, uh, Thomas Snyder actually commented on. Now, those of you who aren't aware, Thomas Snyder would probably have claimed to be uh, the greatest Sudoku solver of all time. Uh, he won the World Championship, I think, two or three times. I may even be doing him a disservice. It may have been more times than that. Uh, just an absolutely incredible solver of Sudoku and he thought that his comment about this puzzle was it's perhaps the best example to illustrate what an X-Wing is that uh, he's ever seen. So let's just have a look at how how the solve would progress and again I'd really recommend you pause the video and work through the puzzle yourself if, um, if you have time to do so because these are all handcrafted puzzles and they lead you to the solution by a very linear logical path um, and for that reason you often often find yourself learning more from these puzzles I think than you do from the standard machine generated puzzles that we see in our daily newspapers so okay you can see a four here well that's that's obvious we have a four here four here that gives us the four here um, that one again that's simple Sudoku rules nothing clever about that and then the five here Again, this five here interacting with this five here, forcing the five down into uh, the bottom row of the grid. And those of you who are eagle-eyed will immediately be noticing that the four corners are open here and can only take the same numbers. Um, so this solver finds the two here. Again, simple Sudoku rules, simple Sudoku rules for this two, and simple Sudoku rules for that two. But then they notice this 8-9 arrangement around the grid. Now, and, and this this is, I suppose, the archetypal X-wing pattern. Once you identify that the 8s and the 9s can only go in these positions, there can no longer be 8s and 9s anywhere down columns 1 and columns uh, uh, and column 9, apart from in these two positions. Um, because, uh, well, if, if, there, if there were an 8, for example, in this position, this cell would have to be uh, a 9, and this cell would have to be a 9. Then we couldn't place um, uh, anything else within the column. It's, it's also an example, I guess, of uh, something we've looked at before, which is overlapping X-wings. So when you have two X-wings that overlap with, with each other, then in the cells where they overlap, they in effect form a pair. So this 8, 9, 8, 9 pair down column 9 here, as well as being an example of an X-wing pattern, actually means this cell and this cell can only be filled with the numbers 8 and 9, um, and similarly for, for column 1. Now, one thing I just wanted to note is, or to ask the question, and some of you will immediately answer this question and think, well, Simon, that's a stupid question. Um, but We've covered uniqueness a lot in these videos, and why is this arrangement unique? Um, because, you know, presumably if this is a 9 and this is a 9, for example, and this is an 8 and this is an 8, then why couldn't we just reverse the order? Have an 8 here and an 8 here and a 9 here and a 9 here. Um, wouldn't that give two solutions to the puzzle? And I think to illustrate why there's a there's no problem with this arrangement. Um, it's perhaps worth just taking a look at a different arrangement. So if we look at this example here, where we have eights and nines, this time not arranged in the corner of the grid, but in the corners of their respective three by three boxes, boxes within columns one and columns three. Now in this situation, there is a uniqueness problem. Um, because whichever way around we arrange the eights and nines, we can simply transpose them we would have an alternative solution to the puzzle. But it's, 
very important to appreciate a critical difference between this arrangement here and the arrangement that we've just been looking at because in this arrangement when we alter whether this number here is an 8 or a 9 um, we alter the contents of our 3x3 three three block so if this is an 8 or a 9 we still need to find another 8 or a 9 in this block somewhere and obviously you know the rest of the numbers can force uh, an 8 or a 9 into these other positions. Now contrast that here when we change the 8s and the 9s we don't change the contents of the box at all we simply move them from one cell in the box to the other cell in the box and there's no other way of disambiguating the positions of the 8s and 9s uh, within this box um, in this pattern here whereas in this situation obviously there is or there might be a way of disambiguating because of what are, what the other numbers in the box force this number to be. So there is no uniqueness problem with this arrangement even though at first blush um, you may think that there could be. So once again thank you for watching I hope this was a useful uh, short video today on uh, one of the classic techniques that comes up over and over again and just a reminder that you need to be a little careful in terms of how you use it. Um, if you enjoyed the channel, please do subscribe. We'll be back soon with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.